gallery system works is uh, the artists get 50% and the gallery gets 50%. It's up to the gallery to do all the press. Uh, that includes an invitation that goes out to probably 2,000 people generally. That's what my mailing list is. And um, then we do a press release. Uh, we install the exhibition for the artist. Uh, and then we leave the exhibition up for 30 to 60 days. And we're here every day trying to sell their artwork for them and meeting with different kinds of people that come in and are interested in art. 18 years ago, Julie Rico's life was very different and the art business was far from her mind. I uh, grew up in a blue collar family and it was um, my dream to always just have a job and work very hard. So when I got a job working on the Ford Motor Company uh, assembly line, uh, I was ecstatic because it was good money and vacation and all that. Uh, I was laid off because of the Japanese imports and uh, President Carter instituted a wonderful plan called TRA, Trade Readjustment Allowance, which uh, we were only allowed to get if we were to go to college and finish our education, which uh, ultimately I did. So um, it just changed my whole world completely. And um, that's what ultimately led me to be an art dealer. Okay. Julie moved to Los Angeles, took a job with the LA Times, and in 1988 started her first gallery in a downtown loft. She called it Rico Gallery. I lived there and I worked there. Uh, I had exhibitions there. Uh, we would work with all different kinds of artists from the community. Um, I was very interested in um, seeing uh, the diversity of Los Angeles um, come together. And so I would have shows for Japanese artists, black artists, Chicano artists, white artists, every downtown artist. So hundreds and hundreds of artists showed at that space. And it was really exciting. But when her landlord decided to tear down the building in 1991, Julie started working with another art dealer and began laying down the groundwork for the Julie Rico Gallery, which she opened a year later. I remember even dreaming about moving to the west side. <laughs> and we would just come and visit occasionally because it was so nice on the west side and the beach and everything. Um, I just basically borrowed money from people. And uh, I moved to the west side and was able to find a space and open a gallery. Some people gave me $500, some people gave me $2,000, but nobody gave me more than $2,000. And uh, it was just a lot of, a lot of uh, sweat and determination. But determination wasn't enough to keep the gallery open. Actually, it was a combination of things that occurred. Um, that the riots had hit, uh, the real estate market in Los Angeles had crashed, and 50% of people's disposable income was gone. Um, it just was a huge sort of depression at that period. So in 1995, I, it was probably the worst. Uh, and I, I went bankrupt, just had to close. Julie toured with Lola Palooza as an art curator and even worked for a movie director. But she missed having her own gallery. During the period I was uh, off uh, from 95 till 97, I actually put together a major exhibition at the Spanish Kitchen Studios in downtown Los Angeles with 150 artists called Hodgepodge. And at that exhibition, this uh, wealthy uh, German man, Manfred Menz, came to the exhibition because uh, he'd received an invitation. And he used to come to my other gallery in Santa Monica. And he offered to give me money to uh, start again because he really liked my gallery. He liked that I did alternative things that I focused on the periphery artists and things that normally art, art dealers don't talk about, uh, I talked about. So he liked that I was sort of the offbeat dealer and wanted to support what I was doing. Julie was determined to succeed when she opened her new gallery in January of 1998. I had to build the most beautiful gallery in LA in order to like just make it a little blip on the dot on the, on the radar screen. And I had to spend $100,000 in order to do that. And uh, I had to um, put a lot of press out. I had to have the most spectacular exhibitions from the very beginning. Even though I was fearful, I also had no fear, in a way, because I was like, I, I didn't have anything, and suddenly I had something. So what was I going to fear? That I was going to go down again? I already went down twice. I mean, you know, it can, it can happen again. <laughs> I hope it doesn't happen again, but it's like 
I've already, I've already been through the worst times, I think. And because I've learned so much from my other spaces, I feel confident that I did the right things with this space, and I feel confident going into the future. Success in the art business is making a lot of money, and making a lot of money for the artist. Taking an artist that has ideas that no one knows about, putting them out there, and making a ton of money on it. And that happens. And apparently it is happening for Julie, both she and her heart.